everybody, it's Miss Kelly again, and I am here today to talk to you about two of the people that we're going to meet in this chapter, chapter 11, to declare independence or not. And if you remember back to the introduction of chapter 11, uh, there was a question that we sort of keep in our mind as we're going through. And that question was, what were the arguments for and against colonial independence from Great Britain? So remember when we read the introduction and uh, the first section, we talked about the loyalists, the people that wanted to remain loyal to the king and Great Britain. And then there were the patriots who wanted to break free from British rule. So today we're going to meet two loyalists, uh, two people that wanted to stay loyal to the king and to England. So the first person that we are going to meet today is Thomas Hutchinson. And there he is. Uh, Thomas Hutchinson was a loyalist governor, and we still have governors today. Governors are the uh, highest office at the state level, so each of the 50 states has a governor. Uh, Thomas Hutchinson was a loyalist who lived in Massachusetts. The king named him the royal governor of Massachusetts in 1771, and you remember that Massachusetts was one of the original 13 colonies. It was a New England colony, and it was the location of the Plymouth colony. Uh, he was a dedicated official, but over time, Hutchinson became one of the most hated men in the colonies because he always sided with the British against the Patriots. So remember that the Patriots made up um, less than half of the people in the colonies, but their numbers were growing. So uh, being hated by the Patriots was not a good thing. Hutchinson was a thin, serious man who rarely smiled. He did not like to show his feelings. Although a successful businessman, he did not wear fancy clothes. As an official serving the king, Hutchinson firmly believed in enforcing British laws, such as the Stamp Act of 1765. Patriots were furious about the Stamp Act. One night, an angry mob burst into Hutchinson's house. The mob stole his possessions and broke furniture. They also destroyed his prized collection of books. From then on, Hutchinson was a bitter enemy of the Patriots. And if you remember back in Chapter 10, the Stamp Act said that people had to pay for a stamp on any paper goods. And that stamp um, was like a tax that was paid to the king. And uh, the money that they were collecting, the reason why they were taxing everything, if you recall, is because they were in debt. The British government was in debt because of the French and Indian War. They had a lot of money that they owed, so they had to make that money somehow. So they were taxing everything, and the Stamp Act was one of those taxes. As a loyalist, Hutchinson believed that the colonists could not govern themselves without the British king and government to guide them. Hutchinson also wrote that British people who lived overseas, such as the colonists, could not expect to have the same freedoms that British people in Great Britain enjoyed. In 1774, some patriots embarrassed Hutchinson by printing some letters that he had written to the British government. The letters said that Great Britain should be tougher on the colonists. When colonists read his letters in the newspaper, many more of them turned against him. They became convinced that getting fair treatment for the colonies from Great Britain was not possible. So back then, of course, they did not have phones or computers or the internet. So the newspapers were the way that they would get their news and they could uh, pass things along. So they took these letters that he had written and they printed them uh, to show that he was a loyalist and that he was not on their side. 
and this caused him to be uh, an enemy of the Patriots. So let's take a look down here at this little, um, this is sort of like a, what we would consider today to be a political cartoon, okay? It would be a way for people to make a point about a, a political topic in sort of a humorous way or a, a way using a picture. So here is an early political cartoon, and it says, after reading Hutchinson's letter saying that Great Britain should be tougher on the colonists, what did the colonists realize? So remember, they published his letter his letter saying that Great Britain should stay in charge of the colonies. What do you think the colonists were thinking? Do you think they were thinking they had to surrender to Great Britain? Getting fair treatment from Great Britain was not possible. Thomas Hutchinson needed to be killed. Or they could negotiate with, the great, with great Britain about getting fair treatment. So let's go back up to the paragraph. And it says it right here at the end. They became convinced that getting fair treatment for the colonies from Great Britain was not possible. So they realized that this was not going to end, that they were never going to be treated fairly. So... I would say that getting fair treatment from Great Britain was not possible would be the answer there. They realized that um, that was not possible. And you could see the people protesting and these little caps they would put on the end of a pole. These are actually not real people hanging there. They're just um, stuffed dummies. They would be, that was called hanging somebody in effigy. That means they would create like almost a mannequin or a replica of the person that they disliked and they would hang them to show that they were angry with them. And my guess is that that is probably Mr. Hutchinson right there. So let's check our answers. I have a little check mark, so that means I got it correct. So Thomas Hutchinson was the governor of Massachusetts. He was a loyalist. He was uh, dedicated to the British government and the king. And he was no friend of the Patriots, nor was the next gentleman that we're going to meet. And that would be Jonathan Boucher. He was a loyalist religious leader, and there he is. Uh, so Reverend Jonathan Boucher was a British religious leader. He used his sermons to spread loyalist beliefs. And sermons were like speeches that were given in churches. Uh, the priest or the religious leader, the reverend, would uh, speak in front of everybody and talk, and that was called a sermon. Boucher first came to the colonies as a young man in 1759 before returning to Great Britain. While back in his home country, Boucher became a priest in the Church of England before eventually moving to the colonies once more. There, he became a well-known religious leader in Maryland. And if you remember from when we read the chapter about comparing the colonies, Maryland at that time was a Catholic colony. It was made for Catholics, um, and the Church of England was the other major church at that time. Boucher was balding and usually wore spectacles or glasses. He was also very intelligent and charming. Boucher was full of energy and ambition and did not shy away from talking in front of large groups. Boucher was never afraid to speak his mind, no matter how many people disagreed with him. As a minister, he expected everyone to obey his teachings. He used his talents and occupation to argue for the loyalists' cause. So it sounds like he was sort of a little bit of a loud mouth, probably lots of fun at parties. Uh, it sounds like he liked to uh, express his opinion to anybody that was listening. And because he believed that the people in the colonies should be loyal to Britain, he began to sort of spread that message as well. Boucher preached that the king's power came from God and that Christians had a special duty 
to obey British laws. Disobeying the king was like disobeying God. And this is a very old notion that people believed that kings were uh, somehow chosen by God or that they were um, given their power by God. So for a religious leader to say that the king got his power from God, that meant that the people should obey the king because obeying the king is like obeying God. And if you're a good Christian, that's what you would want to do. Boucher did not believe that common people were capable of ruling. He argued that the colonists should obey British laws for their own good. He said that these laws came from God and made life safer and better for most colonists. Finally, Boucher warned that working for independence was dangerous and would lead to a war with Great Britain. Such a war would hurt thousands of people far worse than living with a few unfair laws would. So he's sort of telling them that, look, if you are going to fight for this, it's going to lead to a war. Many people are going to die. It would be a lot better if you just, you know, just accept it because we don't want, we don't want people to die. We don't want to risk lives for this. Boucher's loyalist sermons made some patriots angry and they threatened to hurt him. Realizing that he was in danger, Boucher began keeping loaded pistols nearby when he gave his sermons. So he was another person that was disliked by the Patriots. Uh, he feared that they were going to hurt him. So he kept the pistols, I guess, to protect himself. So let's take a look there at Mr. Boucher and see if we can look at some of these statements and see if they represent his teachings. So think back to what we just talked about um, and we'll see if these fitted with what he was teaching and preaching to the people in his church congregation. Uh, disobeying the king was like disobeying God. Well, back up here, it says disobeying the king was like disobeying God. So that is what he was telling people in his sermons. So that's going to go right under there. Uh, the common people were not capable of ruling. So that means just the everyday people, not royalty. And here it is. Boucher believed, did not believe that common people were capable of ruling. So he did not believe that the everyday people could rule themselves. They needed a king, a royal king, to rule them. Christians have a special duty to disobey the king. Well, that's not true. He thought they had a special duty to obey the king because the king's power was given directly from God. So we're not going to put that one down there. If they were unhappy, the colonists should fight the British. Well, he did not think that. He actually uh, warned them not to do that. He said, warned that working for independence was dangerous and would lead to a war with Great Britain. So he did not say that. Working for independence was dangerous. He did say that. He did say that that was not a good idea because more lives would be lost in a war. So let's check our answers. We got them all right. So Jonathan Boucher was another loyalist that we uh, have talked about that was loyal to the king and believed that the colonies should stay under English rule, as well as Thomas Hutchinson, the loyalist governor of Massachusetts. So next time we're going to talk about one more loyalist, and then we're going to start to talk about some of the patriots that thought that we should the colonies should start form their own government. So I hope this was helpful and you can complete the Google form. You can use uh, the TCI website, you can use your textbook, or you can use this video. And I hope this helped. Thanks. See you next time.